right, let's see what we can do this morning about working with a normal curve. It's not the greatest curve, but we're going to go with it. First of all, remember that the normal curve is symmetrical, meaning that the area here to the right side of the mean or the median is the exact same size as to the left side of the median or mean. This is always the mean, ooh, that looks bad, but hey, it's always the mean is smack in the middle, and so this side basically contains 50% of your data. This side contains 50% of your data. So it is a mirror image of, of one another. All right, so now how do we apply this concept of standard deviations above and below the mean to start making determinations of how our data falls when normally distributed. We use the concept of standard deviation to identify areas under the curve. So the first thing that the empirical rule tells us is that plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. That's plus. This is minus. Right? So plus one and minus one. What it tells us is, is that within this area right here, right there, that what you'll end up with is in this area, 68% percent of your data observations will fall. Well, if I have 68 percent of my data plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean and the curve is symmetrical or equal mirror images on one side to the other, then that 68 percent is divided by 2, which gives us 34 percent here 34% here. Okay, remember, we're talking about something that has is a mirror image of itself. All right, so there's our plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. All right, so now we come out and we say plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean. That's going to be right here is going to be 1 plus, count up one more, 2 plus. So this is plus 2, and remember the symbol for standard deviation is sigma. This is going to be minus 1. This is going to be minus 2. So that designates the area that's minus 2 standard deviations from the mean. All right, now we have, we've identified plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean. Now we're going to come out and go plus one, plus two, plus three, minus one, minus two, minus three. Because remember, the point that's the mean theoretically is zero until we apply a set of data. So that makes this side always plus standard deviations, this side minus standard deviations. We refer to this as the upper half of the curve. We refer, refer to this as the lower half of the curve. So now that we kind of know where, what we're talking about and what we're calling it, let's put some numbers with it. All right, so now we've got plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean, and we're going to pretend like they're even, um, drawn on our curve. The question becomes, now what do we know? Well, the empirical rule tells us that because it's normally distributed and it's symmetrical, that plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean within this area between these two points, we will have 68% of our data. Well. If the curve is symmetrical, then doesn't it stand a reason that that 68% is split 
half and half, meaning there's 34% here and 34% here. All right, what else does the empirical rule tell us? It tells us that plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean, which is going to be this area here, this point here, and this point here. It tells us that plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean we're gonna, is going to contain 95% of our data. Okay. Well, if I have 95% of my data, 68% of it is here, so how much of it falls in this area and this area? Well, it's the 95%, right, minus the 68% tells me that by moving out one more standard deviation, plus or minus, I end up with 27 percent more of my data accounted for. Just like we did here, if that 27 percent is equally distributed, then it makes sense that there's 13 point point five percent of my data here. There's 13 point five percent of my data here. Because if I take 13 and a half plus 34 plus 34 plus 13 and a half, I come up with my 95% of my data. All right, so now I've accounted for 95% of my data. But the empirical rule goes on to say that plus or minus three standard deviations will contain 99.7% of my data which is going to be minus 3 here all the way over to plus 3 here that inside that area of the curve is going to be 99.7%. Well, if I have 68% here and I have another 27% here, that accounts for 95. That means that in this area, right here, I have half of the difference between 99.7 and 95%. Because I only go up between that second and third standard deviation, I only go up 4.7%. Except because this is a symmetrical curve, right? It's symmetrical, it's even, whoops, across that mean. I know that that 4.7% is divide, split by 2. So that means I have 2.35, right, here. Makes sense. And I have 2.35% of my data here. And what I end up with is, you notice this is a 99.7%. Well, you'll also notice that the curve never touches the x-axis. And that's because there's always a little bit of data that's out there in those tails. And what's out there in the tails is that 0.3%. Um, and it's out there somewhere. But what we concern ourselves with and what we really want to work with is what's enclosed in this area a plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean. And if that is not the most jumbled up looking drawing, but I'm hoping that this is, is working for you and making sense. So remember, it is a normal distribution. It's symmetrical. It's even on both sides. And you always know every time exactly what percentage of your data falls within one, two, or three standard deviations above or below the mean.